everyone and welcome to a new video in our YouTube channel. We are very excited because we are going to start with a new section that we hope you like. Uh, this section is called Solving Problems Inside of My Farm. So based on our, our experience and experience with uh, growers, we want to address problems that we know are kind of common in greenhouses and plant factories. So today we're going to start with a very, very common problem inside of plant factories. Um, we're going to speak about of deep burn inside of plant factories. Remember, a greenhouse and plant factories, there are different. So today we're going to address the problem inside of a vertical farm. So as you probably know, a vertical farm is a system with multiple layers of production. This system is usually inside of an enclosed environment where airflow, the mass of air, is kind of different from a greenhouse. So we need to pay attention to a specific variables that sometimes in a greenhouse won't, ha won't cause a problem, but in a plant factory, you can have a problem. So um, when we grow plants inside of plant factories, uh, we most of the plants think about growing, for example, leafy greens or lettuce. Uh, lettuce is one of the crops that we know can easily get deep burn if they, they don't have the idea of conditions. So um, if you are not aware about what is deep burn, let me explain first. So deep burn is a uh, necrosis that we can find on uh, the center of the plant, which is uh, the growing area of the plant. Uh, this is because calcium uh, is uh, necessary for the cell wall and deep burn is a calcium deficiency. So if we don't have enough calcium, uh, we will have, uh, you know, the cells uh, will be growing. However, if you don't have enough, enough calcium, you won't be able, I mean, the plant won't be able to form the cell wall and uh, the cell is, is not going to survive. So you will have necrosis, right? So inside of a vertical farm, there are different variables that can affect uh, how the plant is moving calcium. So calcium is a passive nutrient that moves within the water. So if we have problems of how the plant is transpiring, uh, you will have problems with uh, the movement of calcium or any other passive nutrient. So inside of a vertical farm, I'm going to explain now which are the variables uh, that we need to pay attention in order to avoid deeper. So it's very common for us to get photos from growers with concerns about what is going on with the crop inside of the system. So the first variable that we need to pay attention, and it's actually the same one that we pay attention inside of the greenhouse, is airflow. So airflow is very important. Uh, you need to have mechanical uh, ventilation inside of the facility, meaning fans. Uh, obviously, depending on the system, uh, for example, this is a very simple system. If you have a system that is bigger, uh, you probably need to think a little bit more about uh, how you're going to provide airflow to your plants. You need at least to have like a small movement on the leaves. Um, actually, you also, if you pay attention to humidity and temperature, um, you can also get an idea if you are with the correct airflow. We don't want to feel, you know, like suffocated inside of the system. So think about a good strategy for ventilation. But something else that can uh, I can I, I, that I can provide advice on is um, also pay attention to how are you designing the system, because for example, if you don't leave enough space from one layer to another one, you will have more problems with airflow, or it's going to be more challenging to have good airflow. So think about that too. Uh, we want to have at least, uh, depending on the crop that you're growing, for microgreens, it could be like uh, 40 to 60 centimeters, uh, one foot uh, from one level to another one. Uh, but you want to have enough space for airflow. I mean, we don't want to have just the space for growing the lettuce, for example. We need to have like free space up on the top of the plant so you can have better airflow. This is not like necessary, but it's going to make uh, less hard to do a good strategy for the airflow. So again, airflow is important 24 seven, have a good strategy with uh, mechanical ventilation. There are different strategies. Uh, I will leave some links so you can also see some articles on how to provide ventilation inside of vertical farms. There is a lot of research on trying to maintain, you know, uniformity uh, or in uh, the airflow and also uh, the variables because airflow is important to maintain uniformity in temperature and also humidity. If you want to have like more precise information, we want to have an airflow between 0.3 to 1 meter per second. 
Um, it's not necessary to have like a sensor to measure airflow. If you have that, that's great. Uh, but uh, we want to have a little movement on the lips. That's it. Um, too much airflow is also not good. I have seen this. I don't know why for cannabis it's kind of common to find system without a lot of airflow. Um, and that can also stress the plant. So uh, let's try to maintain just what the plants require. Um, another variable that is very important for avoiding tear book to burn uh, is uh, light intensity. So this one is different from a greenhouse. In a greenhouse, we can get a higher amount of light and the plant will be fine. Remember that we have here an environment with a different mass of air inside. I mean, the physics inside of the system is different. So in this case, since we have, you know, like small volume of area where the plant is growing, we also need to pay attention to the light intensity. Based on research, uh, we, we know about the lands that are designed for uh, vertical farms, for lettuce, and uh, we recommend to have an uh, uh, intensity between uh, 220 to 250 for lettuce. Some words go up to 300. However, uh, we want to maintain a DLI. Uh, DLI is the amount of light that the plant is getting per day. Uh, we want to provide a DLI that is not uh, higher than 17. So remember that the plant is growing. So if you are taking measurements at the beginning uh, and you are set up, setting up, like for example, the photo period of your plant to get a specific DLI, when the plant is growing, it's getting closer to the light. So the DLI is going to increase. So you need to pay attention because we have seen, for example, problems with growers that the plant is fine, the plant is growing perfect, perfect. However, when it's reaching the time for harvesting uh, and it's closer to the lambs, they start to get tip burn. So you need to pay attention of the light intensity that the plant is receiving within uh, the development of the plant. So you need to check. We don't want to have a DLI that is higher than 17 for more than three days. That's based on research. Um, we have also people testing like higher intensities, like for trying to um, measure like different results on the plant. However, when speaking with the uh, people doing research, I always ask like, uh, where are you, you were measuring, I don't know, like let's say um, some uh, like biochemicals in the plant or uh, nutrition content. But I always ask like, how is the plant looking when you're doing that intensity? And uh, they always mention, I mean, tip burn. It's, it's there. So uh, let's try to prevent that by using the correct light intensity. Remember, this is not apply. This this don't apply to uh, the greenhouse. In a greenhouse, we can have a DLI that's higher than seventeen, and you won't have this problem. Why? Because when we have less volume and we have the plant like speeding up the growth because of the light, then the movement of calcium is not moving fast enough because the transpiration inside of this system is different from a greenhouse, and you will get deeper. So that that is the other important variable that you need to pay attention to. And we can end up this video with another recommendation. So we uh, sometimes see photos from growers and it's very common to notice that the density that they are using is not correct. We know you want to grow a lot of plants. We want to get a lot of product from your uh, uh, plant factory. However, it's always important to check the plant density that you are using. My recommendation will be to ask to the seed supplier for the specific variety that you are using. Because, for example, for lettuce, uh, the technical information out there is to have like 24, 25 plants per square meter. However, uh, it will depend on the cultivar. Sometimes if you are growing a cultivar that is smaller, you can probably have higher density. And it's good always to ask to the people that can provide information so you can have good density. Remember about our strategy for ventilation. So we don't want to have, you know, like very uh, small volume where the, uh, the air can move. So same case with the density. If you have your plants packed in your system, if you have a good ventilation, let's say you have fans that are close to your plants and provide good airflow, but your plants are very packed, 
uh, then you will have probably good ventilation on top of the plant. However, on inside of the canopy, uh, you will have uh, bad ventilation and you will have necrosis and you can also have a tendency to get tick burn. So that's why it's important with uh, correct strategy of ventilation, with uh, correct management of light, with a good design so you can have better airflow, also include the correct density for your plants. That way you can easily provide the ideal, ideal conditions for your crop. So if you follow this recommendation, you can probably get rid of your problem of tea burn or you can prevent to have this problem in the system. So I hope you liked this new section. Let me know on, your, on the comments and I'll see you on the next video. My name is Carla Garcia, Jorge Maricas Technical Service. You can also find me on Instagram as Professor Grow and I'll see you on the next video.